Ohio's new voter ID law could cause problems for college students. What qualifications are needed to vote in the upcoming primary election? What we know about the country's latest mass shooting, this time at a bank in Kentucky. And after being separated from families during the war, Ukrainian children are making their way back home. And they're sisters, but haven't seen each other in 50 years. And you'll see their reunion tonight on TV2 News. This is TV2 News. Good morning in New Portage County. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Gabby Jonas. And I'm Jacob Brooks. We're going to start tonight with Ohio's new voter ID law that could cause problems for college students. Yes, TV2 Sydney Brown is here with what you need to know about the reaction from Senator Sherrod Brown. Sydney. Hi guys, House Bill 485 is now in effect in Ohio and it requires eligible voters to provide a state-issued ID. I spoke to election experts to hear how college students can be proactive. Ohio college students will face voting barriers with the new Ohio voter ID laws. When we had the passage of House Bill 458, there are new ID requirements and it will impact students uh, quite a bit actually because now you're required to provide a photo ID. This law is a big change from previous election years where students could use their utility bills provided by their university. So you must have a photo ID, whether it be a valid driver's license and it must be Ohio issued. Um, so for a lot of students, they they may not have an Ohio driver's license or an Ohio ID card, but what you might have is a passport or a passport card. Also, if you don't have a state ID card but would like to get a state ID card, you can go to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. There's a couple of locations here in Portage County, and for free, you can have a state ID card issued for you that can be used for voting. The number of college-aged voters is already low. According to Circle's 2022 midterm election data, 21.6% of eligible voters between the ages of 18 and 25 came out to vote. Saying it's pretty clear that this legislature doesn't want students to vote. They're making it harder. And the best message is they don't want you to vote. That's a really good reason to vote. Mm -hmm. And they don't want you to vote because they know that you will stand up for young people, for students' access to education. You'll stand up for civil rights. You'll stand up for women's rights to choose. You'll stand up against the gun lobby. All things that they don't believe, so they want to make it harder to vote. So this law could affect the voter turnout in Ohio unless voters get their Ohio IDs now. We know um, that despite that rhetoric and, and conversation that rates of, of false voting of voter fraud are actually very, very small and slim to none. Um, so this this was passed um, to address a perceived problem. But I do think that it will have particularly targeted, unintended, but targeted effects on young people. One option for all students is to request an absentee ballot to vote in the May primary on the 2nd. Make your request by April 24th. I think as a student, you also need to know that if you can't quite meet the qualifications to vote here in Portage County, depending on where you live in another state or your home county, if you're registered there, you also have the option to vote there and not have to worry about that ID component as well. Now, there seems to be a few different options for college students. Yeah, so if, Sydney, if out-of-state students do not want to go through with the Ohio-issued ID, what are their next steps for the May primary? Yeah, so out-of-state students can still vote in their home county where they're registered or mail their absentee ballot by the 24th. But if anyone is unsure of the options, head to ohiosos.gov for more information on the May primary. I'm Sydney Brown, TV2 News. Thank you, Sydney. Now, this week is Student Employee Appreciation Week. Here at Kent State University, the college takes pride in recognizing employed students for their hard work each year. Colleges across the country also recognize their student employees through the National Student Employment Association. Happening now in the Student Center, actually, the university is hosting a student employee award celebration for its Golden Flashes. After months of work, Kent's Climate Action Plan is done. The city released the final draft of the plan a few weeks ago, and it's basically a roadmap to a carbon-neutral future. It gives strategies for how to reduce gas emissions in the city, and it also has strategies for things like waste management, agriculture, and how to use land. Now, one of the goals the city has is expanding park and recreational trails, like completing the Portage Hike and Bike Trail. 
And today, East Palestine opened a permanent health clinic assisting residents to easy health care as health concerns remain constant due to East Palestine trail derailment. Governor Mike DeWine was in attendance for the grand opening along with the Department of Health Director Bruce Vanderhoff. The clinic will be open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and will provide primary care, pre prescriptions and lab testing. The appointments are required and can be made by calling 330-383-6020. Good evening, Portage County, and welcome to, to tonight's weather forecast. It's been a beautiful day out today, and the sunshine is not going anywhere anytime soon. Let's first take a look at the weather currently in Kent. As you can see, 65 degrees, and it feels like 65 degrees. Visibility is out at 10 miles, and it's not too humid out there, only 18% humidity. Wind at 3 miles per hour, it's a little bit of windy. Maybe grab a jacket, but you should be fine, and the dew point is at 22 degrees. Taking a look into what the weather's going to be tonight, looking into tomorrow morning, it's going to get a bit cloudy around 8 p.m. We're going to keep our temperature at 58 degrees, though, with winds from the west to the southwest at 3 miles per hour, and the sky should clear up around midnight, 47 degrees, with southern winds at 2 miles per hour, and finally, into tomorrow morning. We're going to see a bit of sun with a couple of clouds out there in the sky. Winds from the southwest at four miles per hour for your morning. And finally, looking at tomorrow, we're going to be a high of 71 degrees. It's going to be sunshine with some clouds mixed in there a little bit. Winds are going to be from the west to the southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. And the sunset is finally at 8 o'clock. And that is all the weather that we have for you right now. But stay tuned for temperatures across the state as well as your seven-day forecast later on in the show. Thank you, Noah. Now, Akron is preparing for a wide demonstration zone for protesters following the fatal police shooting. Jalen Walker, the next week's grand jury review. South High Street will be closed off of East Bowery Street on the north end and reopened to traffic at East Street south of the south end. Downtown drivers should be prepared for possible traffic and plan alternate routes. The Actor Updates website will inform the community about further information following the protest zone. You you could be voting on a higher minimum wage in Ohio next year. Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost approved, approved the petition by Raise the Wage Ohio last week. Now, this would raise the minimum wage in Ohio to $12.75 in 2025, then to $15 an hour in 2026. Employees who get tips wouldn't get paid $15 an hour until 2029. For this to be put on the ballot, it now has to clear the Ohio ballot board and then get 413,000 signatures by next year. And as of last Friday, a new Ohio Adoption Grant Program allows parents to receive qualified grants. The Ohio Adoption Grant Program allows for parents to receive $10,000 for adopting youth-aged children, $15,000 for being a foster caregiver to a child prior to adoption, and $20,000 for adopting a child with special needs. Governor Mike DeWine signed off on the executive order saying, quote, every child deserves a safe, permanent, loving home, end quote. A judge has made a politically motivated decision to override doctors, patients, and medical experts and block access to critical medications. Today, we collectively are saying loud and clear, not on our watch. There's growing fallout after a judge blocked abortion pills. What this means for patients and reaction from the vice president. And more on Dalai Lama being seen kissing a young boy on video and how he is addressing his actions to the community. Tomorrow's news leaders. Today's top stories. From an award-winning student newsroom. This is TV2 News, truly Portage County. As of last Friday, a new federal ruling has put a halt to medicated abortion for 64.5 million women of reproductive aging nationwide. The decision comes after Texas newest district judge Matthew Kazmierich potentially leaving health care providers empty handed, even in legally approved abortion states. Vice President Kamala Harris says this ruling could set a precedent impact for Americans. This ruling is an extreme abuse of power. It is an extraordinary example of judicial overreach. The grounds of the ruling are complete, are, are just completely discredited and without grounds. Texas Governor Greg Abbott says he's working to pardon a U.S. Army sergeant that was convicted in the deadly shooting of a Black Lives Matter protester. Daniel Perry was found guilty of murder on Friday after a jury deliberated for 17 hours. 
He was driving an Uber in July of 2020 when he saw protesters near the state capitol. He said one of them threatened him with an AK-47, so he says he shot the protester in self-defense. He faces life in prison and is expected to be sentenced in a few days. And Abbott has asked the parole board to speed up its review. We very much want that district, District 52, to be represented. And so the way to do that is to immediately um, vote someone and, and put them back in. And um, he's the choice. So um, I think what will happen hopefully today is that that will happen. And no one, we won't have any objections and we will be able to move promptly and send him right back. Tennessee officials gathered today to vote on whether to reinstate one of two lawmakers. Lawmakers Justin Jones and Justin Pearson were expelled for leading a gun control protest against the aftermath of a Tennessee school shooting killing six people, including three young children. The Republican colleague vote came after lawmakers returned for their first floor session since expelling both black representatives. Both Jones and Pearson say they will vow to return to the state house. Another mass shooting has left four people dead and nine others injured, including two officers. It happened at a bank in Louisville, Kentucky this morning, and we just got more information about the suspect who is also dead. He's 23-year-old Connor Sturgeon, and he had worked at the bank for more than a year. CNN is reporting that he was notified that he would be fired and left a note that said he was going to shoot at the bank. The shooting was live streamed on Instagram, but has been taken down. President Biden says he wants action on gun reform from Republicans after the shooting. And New Mexico State Police are investigating a police shooting that left one person dead in a Farmington neighborhood. Investigators say police went to the wrong address after responding to a domestic violence call, mistakenly killing and shooting Robert Dotson. Police Chief Steve Hobbs says Dotson's death is tragic. The three officers involved are on administrative leave pending to the investigation. Police now say the wife of Robert Dotson will not be facing any charges. Well, we're getting a closer look at RARE, how the U.S. spies on its allies after some classified Pentagon documents were uploaded online. CNN's Natasha Bertrand is here with the Pentagon's response and what exactly was in these documents. An interagency effort is underway. This level of breach is significant. To determine the authenticity and impact of dozens of leaked Pentagon documents that were posted online in recent weeks. If there's 50 classified documents, there's 50 separate stories that are going to impact on the ground in Ukraine right now. The information contained in the document reveals the depths of U.S. spying on allies and foes alike. Number one, uh, the most important thing we have are our sources. And number two, are our allies. And when those are both put in jeopardy, uh, that makes us less secure and it makes our enemies more emboldened. Some of the documents, which officials say are authentic, expose the extent of U.S. eavesdropping on allies, including South Korea, Israel, and Ukraine. Others seem to divulge key weaknesses in Ukrainian weaponry and military readiness, while some show the degree to which the U.S. has penetrated the Russian Ministry of Defense. Its goal is to weaken our resolves, weaken our uh, alliance. But unlike previous intelligence leaks, U.S. officials believe some of the documents may have been altered. These photos appear to show documents similar in format to those used to provide daily updates to our senior leaders on Ukraine and Russia. Some of these images appear to have been altered. A Pentagon spokesperson said the U.S. is already in talks with allies regarding the leak, and steps are being taken to tighten the flow of such highly sensitive documents. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. The Environmental Protection Agency is expected to take steps in the coming days to tighten restrictions on emission standards. If implemented, the decision would require two-thirds, or 64 to 67 percent, of all new passenger vehicles sold in the United States to be electric by 2032. The proposal comes after California voted last year on banning the sale of new gasoline-powered cars by 2035. As the U.S. tries to keep up with other countries ahead in zero emissions, former Obama EPA official Margaret Oog says it is doable. Welcome back to the second part of tonight's weather coverage, Portage County. Let's start off with current temperatures across northeast Ohio. 
The first thing you notice when you look at this board is the trios of 50s you see up by the lake. 57 in Sandusky, 54 in Cleveland, and 59 in Ashtabula. After you get those 50s out of the way, it is 60s across the board. 65 in Mansfield, another 65 in Worcester, and moving over to this side, 66 in Kent and Canton, as well as 67 in Youngstown. It's been a pretty average day, temperatures go. Now across the entire state, let's see if we see a bit more of a difference in spreads. We have 66 in Lima, 69 in Dayton, and 70 in Cincinnati, as well as 68 in Columbus. Over on this side, we have 67 in Akron, as well as Steubenville, and finally our highest temperature in the state, Athens at 71 degrees. And for your seven day forecast, let's take a look. Tomorrow, it's going to be a high of 71 degrees. We're going to be seeing a lot of sunshine in the next few days, 71, 76, 78. And that is not a typo that you see right there. On Friday, we will be hitting 80 degrees over the weekend. We'll be looking at 75 on Saturday, as well as 67 on Sunday. Monday and Sunday, we're going to have a little bit of rain, but we're going to have beautiful weather until then. That's all for your forecast tonight, Portage County. Have a great week and enjoy the sun sunshine. Gabby, Jacob, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Noah. We now move across the world to hear more about news happening internationally. Yeah, TV2 Skylar Eddington is more, starting with an update on what's been going on in Ukraine, Skylar. Hi, Gabby and Jacob. There have been many updates given on the children of Ukraine and how they are feeling. More than 30 children have returned to their home in Ukraine after they had allegedly been deported to Russia. Many of the children have been separated from their families for months and have finally been able to reconvene. Bogdan, a young boy who was separated from his family for over six months, stated that he cried when he saw his mom from the bus and that he is very happy to be back. We were driving here for nearly a week and I met my mother for the first time in six months. We went to the summer camp for two weeks, but we got stuck there for six months. Why should I cry now? But I cried when I saw my mom from the bus. I'm very happy to be back. Day three rescue operations became underway after hundreds of migrants became stranded in the Mediterranean. Italy's Coast Guard mentioned that one boat was found to have had over 400 passengers on it and was at risk of capsizing after it began filling with water. The support service alarm phone received a call from the boat that informed them that several people on board needed medical attention, including a pregnant woman and a child. Wednesday, tensions began to heighten in the old city of Jerusalem after Israeli forces stormed the Al-Aqsa Mosque twice. Israeli police claimed that hundreds of rioters and mosque desecrators barricaded themselves inside. They stated they will not allow anyone to resort to violence and violate the holiday routine. After the incident, Israel said it struck targets in Lebanon and Gaza Friday, which led to Lebanon retaliating, with 34 rockets becoming the largest attack since 2006. Israeli police have now increased their forces in Jerusalem. Outrage has sparked on social media after the Dalai Lama was seen in a video kissing a young boy. The video is from an event in India this past February where the spiritual leader kissed the young boy on the lips. Dalai Lama's office said that the 87-year-old deeply regrets the incident and that, quote, His Holiness often teases people he meets in an innocent and playful way. The identity of the young boy is unknown at this time. If you would like more information on these stories, you can go to KentWire.com. Reporting for TV2, I'm Skylar Eddington. Back to Gabby and Jacob at the desk. Big news on one of golf's biggest weekends, why Tiger Woods has dropped out of the Masters. Coming up on your TV2 Sports Report, we'll take a glimpse at baseball on the weekend and the fantastic performance from John Rahm in the 2023 Masters Tournament. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Tiger Woods is withdrawing from the Masters prior to resuming in the third round due to injury. Yeah, so the golfer completed seven holes before being suspended Saturday due to unplayable weather. And Woods tweeted that he is disappointed from his re-aggravating plantar fasciitis and is grateful for his fans supporting him during this difficult time. And you know what, Jacob, it is really sad, you know, that Woods has to leave under these circumstances, but, you know, he had a great run. Yeah, he did. It sounds like a nasty injury, so hope he gets better soon. Yeah. Let's go to Dom O'Brien now. He's here with some more from the Masters, also local sports. Hey, Dom. Thank you, guys. Hello, friends, and welcome to your TV2 Sports Report on the 6 o'clock newscast. I'm Dom O'Brien. We're going to start off today with some college action in Portage County. 
Kent State swept Bowling Green this weekend, leading to head coach Jeff, Jeff Duncan's 300th win. The Golden Flashes pitched their way to a one-run win on Friday with a combined shutout effort from Ben Cruikshank and Mitchell Scott. The second game consisted of four home run shots, two of them in the first inning, to lead to a 10-1 victory in the third game, ended with Mitchell Scott getting his fifth save of the season. Coach Duncan is the third coach at Kent State to have 300 wins. The Cleveland Guardians had an instant classic last night against the Seattle Mariners with a final score of 7-6 in the 12th inning after falling to Seattle Friday and Saturday. Teosco, Teoscar Hernandez nailed a single in the top of the 12th to give the Mariners a 6-5 lead, but the Guardians never gave up. Josh Naylor grabbed a sacrifice RBI to score Ahmed Rosario. Then, Josh Bell then sent a bouncing ball to second to score jo Jose Ramirez for a walk-off win. Cleveland moves on to play the Yankees in a three-game series this week. We move over to one of the biggest tournaments in all of professional golf. John Rahm captured his 87th, the 87th Masters title in Augusta, Georgia last night, finishing at 12 under par, winning by four strokes. The year's Masters was a marathon for some players, including Rahm and Brooks Kepka. Because of inclement met weather, the final pairing ended up playing 30 holes on Sunday to finish out the third and fourth round. Kepka, who had the lead for the majority of the tournament, never got the ball rolling from the tee box to the bottom of the cup. He amassed to only three birdies with six bogeys on the day, where he ended up shooting a three over 75, placing him in a tie for second with Phil Mickelson, who shot the best in round four with a seven under 65. Rom equalized or beat Kepka on every hole in the, in the round four. Winning the green jacket with a three under 69, Rom is the fourth Spaniard to win the jacket alongside Seve Ballesteros, Jose Maria Olatabal, and Sergio Garcia. Yesterday was also Seve's 66th birthday. That's all I have for tonight's sports report, but stay tuned at 8 o'clock tonight for a brand new episode of Sports Corner. I'm Dom O'Brien, and we will see you soon, Portage County. And ba -da ba 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 I'm loving it. See what new sweet treat is hitting McDonald's nationwide. Welcome back. A woman in Kansas City, Missouri had an unforgettable Easter weekend with a heartwarming story that feels like it was packed right out of a movie. 50 years ago, Melissa Herger officially met her sister. This is a really great story. So while it felt like the search was one sided, they found out soon enough that her long lost sister, Amy Leonard, was searching for her too. And this reunion was decades in the making and it seems like both sisters had an Easter weekend that they will love forever. And you know what, Jacob, I am certainly loving it because McDonald's has released, you guessed it, a new limited edition McFlurry. The new flavor is strawberry shortcake, starting with the classic vanilla base like all McFlurries do. It follows up with a strawberry flavored clustered swirl as shortbread cookies blended into the strawberry swirl itself. The Mickey D's dessert hits various chain locations Wednesday with limited supply. Now, Jacob, I mean it when I say I am truly loving this new strawberry shortcake McFlurry. That looks really good, but I'm allergic to it, so I can't really I can't really comment on it. But oh, no. that looks really good, so I'll I'll get some like dairy free ice cream and like put some okay. cracker crackers on it and pretend it's the yeah, same you're, thing. Yeah, you're gonna swirl in some strawberries. Yeah, I'll make it McFlurry. look just like that. Okay, perfect. And you know what? My my mom and grandma are actually from Kansas City, Missouri. Really? Yeah. So I'm familiar with the state. So it was just really heartwarming to see you know the sisters finally seeing each yeah, other. Yeah, and that's that's so cool. Like now that we have all this technology that's you know able to connect people more yes. I, I love these stories they're some of my favorite no I totally agree well that's all we have tonight for you today Portage County thank you so much for joining us for updates on all these stories and more visit our website at kentwired.com and our social media on all platforms on all platforms at Kent Wired I'm Jacob Brooks and I'm Gabby Jonas have a great night Portage County